G'day, how you going? This is Ian Appless here, your acrylic guru from Australia, and welcome to my channel. Now, did you see that picture on the opening credits there? A bit of a rocky beach, water wet scene. It's what we're going to paint today on the canvas sizes are right there. Just a canvas board I've got there. You can use a canvas board, stretch canvas, whatever you desire for your surface to paint on. And we'll get the colours going up there as well, all right? And um, while we're waiting for the colours to go up, check out the link in the description below for my Patreon page where you can come on board and support my content. And there's a link, I'll put a link for my son's YouTube channel. He's um, learning to paint and he's filming his lessons, well not his lessons, but he's filming his process on YouTube. So there's a link in the description below for Reese's channel if you want to watch him go through his painting journey. Support him there. All right, so let's get into this and I'll enjoy my coffee as well. So I've got my coffee going. I had trouble with the monitors and all that this morning. Otherwise, I would have been started an hour ago. But um, these things happen, you know. All right. All righty then, let's get into it. I'm excited. On my canvas here, I've sketched in a bit of a outlay of where I want some rocks, my sky and the ocean and the foreground, okay? So let's get down to the palette. And I'm using my medium retarder and I've got white flow paint with the retarder there. So I'm going to grab any brush and I want to load that up with the flowing white paint and the medium retarder. So these are both mediums. Someone was asking me, is medium, is flow white and medium retarder the same thing or can they be used? There, I, I want you to know that they are two different things. But everything you add to your canvas is a medium. So I'm, I'm, why I'm using this white flow paint, I'm putting this in the sky area. And because I know I want to have some nice blending colours of the sky and clouds here like you can get with oils. So I'm prepping the canvas for that to happen. So I've got it in the sky area white flow paint mixed with retarder they're two different things okay back on my palette here i've just put some phthalo blue and i'm putting some more retarder retarder slows down the drying time of your acrylic paints it retards it retard means to slow down all right so i'm getting that on this brush now i want the top of my sky a bit darker than the bottom so i'm going to start at the top Get the brush and I'll come down to the horizon line. Get it in there. And that was nice and quick. See that paint? I can see the retarder in there. Now I want to just put a bit more white here. So I've picked up some more flowing white and I'll start at the bottom and bring that up, pick up some more. See if it was a structured white it would have went a lot stronger. Because I don't want a really bright loud sky, that's the colour I want. That's it. Now I'm going to grab a brush, that, that can be left for you beginners if you like, but I'm a bit of a fussy bugger. And I'm going to blend those brush strokes out of there. All right, so I've got my two inch blending brush and I'm stamping it on and probably little twists as well, but just to blend all that nice and soft so it doesn't look like a scratched up surface. Practice your blending if you haven't blended like the way I show people. And it's always important to look at that, what's on that. It's always important to wipe your brush as you blend if you're blending this way so you're not picking up darker paints and putting it on the lighter areas. Now with my clouds, I want to try and have a bit of 
dark shadow in them. So I'm grabbing the phalo blue that I had and a bit of red, and I want to mix up a bit of like a purple. I hope it's going to be purple. That's sort of... Now let's put some white in it to see how the colour's looking. Yep, that'll do. If I can use, I've, I've pushed it into here now, so there we go. I've pushed it into there. So what I want to do, I'm going to get my good quality white. See, that's the shadow I want for my cloud. I've put some good quality structured white paint there. Now I'm going to pick up some of this. And where, let's just say I want something over here. I'm going to put that there first. This is, I've never done it like this before, but I'm just hoping it's going to work. I'll pick up some of that structured white on my fan brush. And I'll, well, let's get that a bit zigzaggy the way I'd normally do my cloud. Let's say like that. Then I'll pick up some of the white. And let's get, you know how I normally, this is not a big cloud, so I don't want to overkill it. Keeping the whites there. And sort of dance that on top. Let's see how that's going to work. All right, I've got this brush here. I want to blend the way I normally blend, but I'll be blending into that shadow there. Oh, I should have really tested this out on a canvas before I started. But I think it's bringing up some cloud colours. It's pushing them through. It looks a bit more realistic, not so white and tickle the tops. So I don't want big, massive clouds. Sometimes you can overcloud your sky. It's hard to stop some things at times. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That worked for me. We'll do another one. We'll say put it here. So what I'm going to try and do is, I know I'm going to have a big cloud here, okay? So I'm putting this in that sort of manner. I've washed my fan brush and I'm loading it up, whether you use a fan brush or some sort of other brush. And I want to sort of go into it a bit, not right into it and get your cloud Let's now wipe your little blending brush or whatever blending brush you use and blend those together. I'll get that out there, twist it up a bit. Yeah, I like the way I've got that darker colour in there. Now, I think I've killed a lot of that white. I might have to go back. Let's get this on there, that's it. Yeah, we got that purpley grey shadow there. See, that's a bit loud there, I like to soften them. See, I might put a bit more, just like that, if I find there's not enough there. Tease it into there, get those colours going. Now I'll put a bit more white just in front of that to sink it down a bit maybe, just here. Keeping that grey. There we go. And come down. Okay, let's not overkill our sky with clouds. If you want to give your clouds a bit of a bottom, like I've got some of that just a little bit there, wipe that same brush, really wipe it good, just so you can tickle that up into the bottom of that cloud and it kind of gives it a shadowy bottom. See like that? And see like this one, this one has no shadowy bottom on it, okay? So that paint that we mixed up, with the red and the phalo blue. I'm just showing you on this as an example. Find roughly where the bottom is, put a bottom on it, 
wipe that brush, the same brush, really well. Okay. And then find that and just sort of dance it and tickle it into that cloud. And you kind of, there we go, it's got like a bit of a bottom on it. They look like they're sitting there. I'm just mucking around with my clouds. These aren't part of the lesson here. This is just me off camera detailing them a bit more just because I want to but I've actually got the camera on showing you why I'm doing it or what I'm doing. You can virtually make a cloud with any brush. I'll just clean that little brush and have a mouthful of my coffee. So here he's all going there. This is where you can pause and catch up if you like, but you're virtually just going to do a sky your way, the way you do a sky. In every tutorial that I do, I'm showing you how to paint a painting but it's not necessarily saying this is how it's got to look. If I'm putting a sky there, in my tutorial I'm showing you, well paint your sky in this painting. Paint your type of tree, your type of rocks, your kind of water. And the more you put into art and the more you do it, you'll find the more you get out of it and the better your work starts looking to yourself, okay? And I've got to stress to a lot of beginners out there that post pictures up and they're always self-doubting themselves there's no need to self-doubt yourself, trust me. Um, so, so long as you know, art is not a contest. It's not like who's got the best picture out there. Just remember, all art is different, okay? That's all it is, it's different. Joey Bob's isn't better than Mary Lou's, okay? They're just different from each other. So just remember that and don't, and don't self-doubt yourself. Just give yourself confidence and if you're happy with the way it looks, and you had fun doing it and enjoyed it, it was a great feeling with inside your soul. That is all that matters, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna start putting some water in here and a bit of rocky area after me coffee. I'm having a coffee and I'm talking a bit, but I hope you don't mind. I've got enough room on me palette there. Now I've blow dried this and we're just gonna put the horizon line there. So the top of this tape is where my horizon is going to be. I'm looking where I want a good spot for it to be, just there. So we'll flip that back. And you can just do this with some tape. You don't need rulers and measuring. A horizon, so long as the horizon is straight, it can be on an angle, but so long as it's straight, because the angle's giving it pers pers perspective. Okay, now we're going to put some water in here, because this is all my blending done. Well, I'm not going to really be using retarder no more, and I want to get the water in now. Okay, down here I've got some French ultramarine blue and some phalo turquoise or a turquoise colour. And I've got my flowing white because I want to get some of this. This is a different blue to the sky. We don't want the water virtually the same colour as the sky. I want the horizon out there darker than the part coming in. So let's get this on there. So I'm going to virtually start at the top here, and I find these flathead brushes are good for precision. Precision. So we'll get this nice and dark out there. Nice and dark. Alright. I've got some rocks here, so I don't have to go all the way. Now I'm going to put a little bit of water with that just so it'll help flow across the canvas. And then we're gonna pick up the turquoise. That's too, that's too light. I want a bit of darkness. And then we'll bring that light color back in. So we'll work out how far out we want it to, about there. This is the ocean, so it's not a, a luscious, bright, light-coloured lagoon. It's the ocean, remember? 
So we'll get that down there. Now I'll pick up some of the lighter color and bring it forward. Because my water's going to stop about here somewhere, I suppose. So I'm just picking up the white now. And it's because that brush is full of the turquoise. It's lightening it up as I bring the water forward. Just to about there. Somewhere there. Now I want to wipe and dry this brush. I've just wiped it on my paper towel. And I want to get this like that and see where that I've wet it see where it's meeting the blue up here let's blend that a bit too blend them and merge them together there we go we got a band of dark and a band of light I usually put strokes of white in here like that and it just creates water movement on my water. It's an easy, easy way to get a water surface. Let's just get this and come across that. All the way across your board, just to sink them down a bit. Down here I've got some yellow oxide or yellow ochre and my flowing white again. Because before this dries, it's getting a bit dry, before it dries I want to grab my yellow ochre. I'm going to put some retarder in it just to help it stay wet. And I want to virtually get that to the blue. Let's quickly get it on. Okay quickly get it on, quickly pick up some white, dance through it, oh there's a bit of green in there, made a bit of a boo-boo, let's see if we can get that green back, put some white in it to lighten it up all over the place, now see where it's meeting that turquoise, like you do the sky you're blending, I want to see if we can blend that together and merge it, yeah that's, see how it's on together that's that's cool that's fine wipe your blending brush always wipe your blending brushes yeah that's because we're going to put a bit of breaking water in this as well wipe it again i can see it it's bringing up the brown up here i don't want that there all right i'm all virtually using the colors i've got to work with and get the strokes out. Okay, before she dries, I've picked up a flat brush and I want some sort of sharp breaking water just out here. Just something to represent some breaking water. I'm using the good quality white paint here. Let's have some real heavy splashing here. I'll make use of that white line there. In front of that again. Chisel the edge of your brush so it gets nice and sharp. There we go, that'll do. Just some breaking water out there. Now I want to put the other water washing up here. Now for the wash up on the banks here, I'm using my little it's a little flathead brush, but it's been manipulated in such a way that it's great for small blending and a smaller fan brush. I want sort of the water like cascading. Let's do a bit at a time and try and keep it in perspective with the picture. So we want this dribbling back. This is the water now onto the sand. Is my hand not in the way? We're killing the edge, but keeping the sharp edge there, okay? And we sort of dance it back. Wipe your brush as you go with this. 
and it just and if anything you're doing it in um horizontal ways not just any old way see like how that bit out there is horizontal we're keeping the water horizontal wipe your brush where's my paper towel it's a million miles away just like that okay and we're going to do that along probably some washing out here trying to keep it in a horizontal way like that wipe my blending brush I'm killing the edge softening it back into the ocean there on horizontal movements sometimes you can squint your eyes and have a look at your work and see what's looking good or what needs lighter or darker aspects and see how that's just water now I'm looking at it in the monitor I could see it can probably use a bit more depth there just like that and do the same again but it's out there in the vastness of it all how's that looking yeah that's fine it's just water washing up just about there horizontally scrape it and manipulate it back into that sand there okay Cascading here as well because it sort of comes in swells or sessions I've sometimes when I was a little kid at the beach I've often counted the water how many times it comes in and its movements and all these weird things that go on in a kid's head and this is just my way of interpreting it I suppose since now I've grown up onto a canvas we'll get this paper off the horizon line there there's our ocean horizon line all right now this is all fine as it is but it's kind of floating so as in always to we'll sit it down by putting some shadow there shadow always stops something from floating if you've ever done something on a canvas and it's got that looks like it's sort of floating there that's because it's lacking shadow so we're going to grab the darkest color in our canvas here I'm not just going to grab black and that's going to create my shadow I've just got the turquoise I've wet it with the spray bottle I'm getting my script liner and I'm twisting it through because we want a nice sharp point on there and dance it in a way it's not one big solid line we're just sort of here and there twisting your brush as you go the finer you can get this the more real it'll look okay I'm twisting it because this is pretty much all on the sand there and see how it's just sitting it down <sighs> twisting it this is fun because you get to see your your painting come to life twist it nice you can have a shaky hand how's that looking on the monitor yeah that's that looks like it's sitting down Some lines in a painting need to be as thin as possible, which gives it that crack of wowness. If you put certain lines in too fat, that sort of gives it that amateurish look, okay? But there we go, that's just something. You can see how they've sat down. And see here, I'm looking in the monitor, this can probably do with a bit of shadowing here. Something like that. I 
All right, we're gonna put some rocks in the water over here. So in my opinion, I've gone for some raw umber, raw sienna dark, it looks light, but they call it dark, and Payne's grey. And obviously I've got some white over here as well. And I wanna pick myself up a flat brush, a bright or a flat chiseled brush, and I'll go for the darkest color first, which is the Payne's grey. Just loading it onto me flathead brush there. I'm gonna call it a flathead brush, but they're called a bright, but I didn't know what a bright was when I was learning, so I'll call it the basic. And we'll put some sort of rock out here. So with these brushes, look, for acrylics, you can get nice sharp edges, like so. This is virtually gonna be the shadowy area of our rock. So about there, and he's in the water. And we can just color that in. Don't be too thick and heavy with it because this we gotta dry to get the highlights and everything in there, okay? So we'll just sit that about there. Now I've dried that so my mud won't, not my mud, so my paint will not mud up on there. Now I'm picking up the raw umber on my brush. That was the, there's the three there, Payne's Grey, Raw Umber and Raw Sienna Dark. This one here is the dark colour of the rock, but that Payne's Grey is just the actual shadow of the rock. So we don't want to use the shadow as the, of the rock as the dark colour of the rock. We're getting this in there, just in a roundabout way. Let it scratch its way through. Keep some there. Where are we? Just sort of in a roundabout way. There's our dark colour of the rock. Now I'm going to clean this brush and I'm picking up the raw sienna dark and I want to just fridge around and probably put some of this into the rock some sort of way. Rocks can be so mind-blowing and difficult. I find sometimes they can be very hard. I'm just sort of squinting my eyes and dancing some on, bring that ridge up there a bit carry it on like so I don't know how's it looking in the monitor that's not too bad then to top it off wash your brush and dry it in a paper towel but I'm probably going to get a little bit of the good structure white on the brush there and I want to just a little not too big see how very little they are And don't overdo it either. See, they're starting to look what I call cartoony. So what I will do, I'm going to wipe that brush. Just wipe it. And pull that brightness of that white back into the colour there. And hopefully that'll soften it. Because sometimes you can go over brightness and I just give it that name cartoon look. I think that's, how's that look? That's not too bad, over here's a bit still bright. Okay, so they were our three colors, so I'm picking up the Payne's Grey again. Uh, oh, before I do that, because that's behind, I want something sort of in front of that. I'm picking up the good quality structured white. I want to put some water breaking, just let's say on the outside there a bit. See, because these brushes you can, control what you put on there I feel and now we want some water just sort of splashing within that dark keep these parallel the waters at the base of here keep it parallel no not parallel horizontal get parallel and horizontal mixed up at times so you've got all this dull white splashing and then you put some real hard white like so and it'll just there we go all right so we're picking up our paints Gracie I want to come in front of that rock now so we'll sort of come up here just leave some water in the middle there Break the tops up a bit. 
come off the painting. If anything, it's good to come off the painting in an upward motion, whether you're doing mountains or lands, sides of land or something like that. I was told that by a person that's been doing painting a lot longer than me. You would have heard of Leonard Lenhen. He, when I went and visited him a few years ago or a year ago, he was telling me some certain aspects about painting and he has a very good knowledge He's been painting as far as I can remember back in the 70s and 80s. I've only started in the noughties. No, in the teens. So I'm not going to take any credit away from him. Alrighty, that's dried. I'm picking up the raw umber on the same brush. I've cleaned the brush out and we're virtually going to find our shadowy areas. So I, I I'm pretty much want uh, some shadows up in here. I want these rocks like spearing up. Okay, and we'll just sort of, I want some sort of dimension in it too, like I said. Let's just play around with it, pretend we're artists and carry on and keep some dark down the bottom. Is it picking up that? Yeah. Careful not to kill your bottom bit because we've got to get some water there. Alright, I'm not going to blow dry this because this is not on as heavy as the Payne's grey. Now we're picking up the raw sienna dark and we want to sort of get some of this. I, w I think I'll keep the bottom just dark. I'm just stabbing it on in lengths like this. We'll sort of go up. We can tease that as we go. This is virtually the colour of the rock with tones and shadows in it. You can wipe your brush and probably grab another one and see how they look all put on. You can probably, oh, that's wet. I better dry that. <laughs> Blend it. But just let me dry that blending brush first. I nearly killed it. If it's still wet enough, we can soften all that. This is just an idea, but maybe it's not a good idea. Not everything we do on YouTube is perfect. Now, I'm just going to grab some of the white into that. I've just picked it up and I want to use this for highlighting that rock. So, just highlight it in a way. Just wipe that brush and pick up a bit of the Payne's Grey and sort of dance back in there because I feel I've killed a lot of the darks. I'm just getting the white now and really highlighting some bits that are really bright just to make it look like the sun's sort of hitting places here and there. I don't want to overdo it though. And we'll put some more water just splashing up against there as well you want to sit it down in the water there just like that grab my blending brush my little munted up flathead brush that I use for blending and we'll sort of blend this out into here then we can put some distinct heavy white. Can you see that? Just make it look like it's splashing against the rock. So the water under it was dirty. And this is nice and bright. All right, we've still got some paint left over. So I'm just going to sort of put one more rock over this side, something with a shadow in it, all right? Where's this Payne's Grey? We'll just map a, a shape in there. Now in my mind I've got a 3D vision going on in my head. Oh, 
you have the sun coming this way or that way. I want it virtually coming from the front this way. So I'll sort of get a, where's me rock? Keeping the shadow reasonable to the rock. And we'll get that mapped in as well for the shadow. Because shadows are really great. They really sit things down. I'll detail that shadow when I turn the camera off. I'll just get it on there so you can see for now. All right, so we're just gonna finish this rock off with its mid-tones and lighter tones in there. And then I'll probably sign and take this tape off and see how she looks. I might put a bit of water sitting around this as well though, so that doesn't look like it's floating. All right, so we're gonna grab the same, where's my brush I'm gonna use for that? I'll probably use this one. To me with acrylics, these are as good as a knife. So we've got our raw, what is it? Raw umber and raw sienna dark again. We'll pick up the raw umber and we'll give this rock some dimension. So this you'll see on top of the I want it coming down because it's going to be like a, this is going to be the top of the rock here. That's what I've got going on in my head. So we'll bring this around, keeping the darks so as we don't make it look weird. It's important to keep your darks. It's sort of coming down. Dark on that side of the rock because that's where our sun is. I've given it a quick dry. Picking the paint up on the brush. How's that looking? Yeah, I'll probably put something there. Oh God, I hate doing rocks, I'm scared. Now we'll get a bit of that light color that's already mixed with the white just to give it some distinct highlighted areas, you know? So like, I'll make that like a little rock in front of it. Is that working? Yeah, but see, if it's not working, dry it, which is what I'm gonna do. So I wanna give this a bit of highlight here. Some bits up in here. So the sun's hitting this side of it. How's that looking? Not too bad. And then we'll sit some water around it as well. All right, I've just picked up some of the flowing white paint with blue on it. And let's try and get some water here and coming out like in a pool because the water around the rock if anything sits down just like that oh it's a bit it's a bit on the bright side I don't want it too bright golly yeah that'll do chisel the edge of that brush so it'll work for you yeah I want it there, that's it. Sit it down. Get a bit here. A bit can sit in the shadow, it's fine. I want to drag. Just like that. I'm following the grains of the canvas here to keep them straight. Just to finish it off, I'm getting a darker tone of this yellow oxide and white, which is the raw sienna dark. And I'm probably just, I don't know, just putting some 
because it's just all one color. It doesn't look so real. So I'm grabbing this and let's just say I'm putting some dark bands here and there. And then I'll put some really even darker shadows in this because probably want that a bit darker here all the way. All right, then we just get a little bit of dark. Find the dark color on your palette there. I've got some of the Payne's Gray and Raw Umber. Actually, I'll just use some of the Raw Umber. And I just want the tiniest. Just giving it some depth in these shadows. Some like rocks or something, little stones or something. I'm just gonna sign it down here. And then we'll pull this tape off. I'm excited to pull that tape off. Yeah, come on, Mr. Ian Harris. And we also, I don't know if any of you know this, I always do Steve's little footprint down there. Okay, that's dry. Now, before I go, I want to show you a new idea I adopted, and I passed it on to my son, Reese last night, and he used it in his video, because he's beginning to paint, and he's just filming his painting journey. He's not an instructor or nothing. He's just showing you how he's coping with his painting. So I call this tape lining. Now, you know, you've got horizons, or you've heard me say, oh, I hate using a knife, and you want to get these nice razor-sharp lines in your painting. Adopt this tape lining idea. Now what I do, I'm gonna put the tape across the horizon line. Cause I wanna get some white across that horizon line, okay? So I wanna, you gotta be very fine with this. So find your horizon line and you're probably making half a mil gap. Just get that down there like that. And then we're going to grab another piece. And you can say, okay, I've come to the part of the painting where I've got to tape line it. And then we're going to get the most finest line. Now, please don't do this line as one big solid. Break it up in that tape, okay? Just push that little bit down there. Use a flathead brush and use good quality white. Now I'm just picking it up on a flathead brush. And if anything, you want to go like this. See these broken up pieces? You want them, some of them in there. So I'll start from the edge here. Just like so. You want bits broken up. Come off the tape and then onto it. And I will tell you, different quality tapes bleed, which means it lets the paint through. If you go with your line, there's our end there and a little bit there. If you go with your line, you've got less chance of bleeding. If you're going across it and pushing it all away, you might get paint in there and you'll have a big ugly line. And then we pull this tape off. And because I went heavy and dark, heavy and dark in places, you can see what it's done, okay? And I call that tape lining. Okay, let's pull this tape off this painting and then we'll put a frame on it. And see how she looks. I've got to just tape the high on my... Look at that one. We'll set a frame on there. Give you an idea. There we go. That's not too shabby, eh? We can still detail it over and over until the cows come home. But I've got my clouds with some darker shadows in there instead of just black and white. So we've got our nice soft blues at the bottom, a bit darker at the top. And we've got some shadow there. And I've noticed in clouds, you always see the red in the grey. Anyway, we've got how... Ocean horizon line, we've got different shades of water, we've got water washing up, we've got some shadow casting across the different coloured sands, okay? That's not too shabby. All right, I hope you like this exercise for you beginners out there. We'll call this Rocky Beach or something like that. 
uh, subscribe on my icon in the bottom right hand corner there and add me on Facebook if you want to be friends and ask me more personal or one on one questions on how to do things or what, where and how. Alright, if you like what I've done you tell your friends but if you don't you tell everybody alright. All the best, goodbye, good luck and good on you.